I am such a professional. <laughs> So, at the time this video will be posted, it will have been six months since I lost the love of my life, my fiance, Tyler. thing that people have said to me the most is I can't imagine what you're going through you know how you're feeling how hard things have been and truthfully I get that because I also can't imagine <laughs> how I'm gonna get through every day it's not something that anyone should have to imagine a 27 year old with a full and beautiful life ahead of them should not die. It just shouldn't happen. But it happened to my Tyler. And so not only do I have to imagine my life without him, but I also have to live it. And it has really sucked. It's been really hard to try to figure out what the heck I'm supposed to do now. My favorite word lately has been excruciating. <laughs> it's, it's the only thing that comes even slightly close to describing what this has been like. And my other favorite word is exhausting. The exhaustion of grief is so strange. It's not like any other feeling of being tired I've ever experienced. It's not something you can sleep off or like get enough rest to relieve. It's just so consuming and it's constant. And you know, based on books and podcasts and general Googling, you know, these feelings are normal, along with the feeling of being completely disoriented, like lost in space, can't figure out which way is up, no idea how to move forward. And those things are normal, I'm told. <laughs> and honestly, I'm less concerned about being normal. Really what I'm looking for when I'm listening and reading and searching is to feel less alone. And don't get me wrong, I am I haven't been I haven't been alone for a single second of this journey. I have the absolute best village that's keeping me going and I'm so grateful for that. But you know many of those people in my village have not experienced a loss like this. And so that still leaves me feeling pretty isolated. I've noticed too, a lot of the content out there about grief is in reflection. Like it's people talking about, you know, they're a year or several years or a decade out from their loss and they're talking about how they got through it you know once they're already through it <laughs> and not a lot is from people going through it right now you know in the thick of their early grief i don't know if it's weird but that's what i desperately want to see <laughs> i want to see someone else surviving with me you know like how what it looks like for them how they're doing it how they're making it and that's what I feel like would make me feel less alone. But I get why there's not a ton of it out there. Like this is uncomfortable. <laughs> it's not, it's not pleasant to put yourself out there and be this vulnerable. 
So that brings me to this feeling I've had probably since like four or five weeks after Tyler died. I've just had this like deep feeling in my bones that is telling me to do two things. One is to share my experience, to just talk about it, just put it all out there. And truly like get it out to make myself feel better <laughs> to, to just relieve myself of all of this stuff and the second thing is to tell Tyler's story and that's even more urgent to me so that he can serve this greater purpose so that this can be his legacy those are the only things that come to mind when I ask myself that what the heck do I do now question. It's just the only thing that really makes sense to me anymore. <laughs> so, you know, I started thinking about how I would do that. And for one, I'm just thinking like, what if I were the person that I wanna see on the internet sharing their early grief? <laughs> And something in my bones is telling me to be that. To show up for myself. And I don't know, maybe for someone else too. If you're here because you lost someone you love, I am so sorry. Know that I am praying for your peace and for theirs too. And if you're here to feel less alone, know that you are helping me feel less alone too. Okay, so that number one is what I feel I need to do for me. But like I said, more importantly, number two is to share Tyler's story. And I really believe there's a greater purpose to it. And I know with 100% certainty, actually confirmed by a text from his friend, that he would want this. I know he would want his life and legacy to help someone else. I know it with my whole soul. So I'm here to help him do that. Okay, quick pause while I'm editing. I just wanted to offer a warning before you go any further. I am about to talk a little bit more about how Tyler died and his struggle with addiction. And if this is too heavy for you right now, that is okay. I encourage you to check in with yourself real quick, see if this is something you really want to let into your mental space and energy. And if it's not, that is okay. If now is not a good time, you wanna come back later, or if you literally never come back and never invite this into your space, that is okay too. Protect your energy. Do what's right for you. It's important. Okay, back to it. Tyler struggled with addiction for at least two and a half years that I know of, but I suspect there were many years that he was struggling in secret. There was a lot of guilt and shame surrounding his struggle and you know it's not hard to imagine why addiction has a horrible stigma associated with it to admit that you're struggling with anything much less addiction is tainted with this perception of weakness and inferiority and lack of worth and there can be really hurtful labels associated with addiction too. So, you know, it makes sense why Tyler hid his struggle. Long story short, and maybe I'll share the long story here someday. His addiction became too bad to hide in April of 2020. It was about a month into the pandemic. So it was just the perfect storm. And the time between then and his death in August of 2022 was 
painful and scary and really hard. But there were also beautiful moments of self-discovery and movements towards self-love and we even were able to meet a milestone of getting engaged which is a moment I will forever be grateful for. And then seven weeks later, he was gone. His death certificate noted that he had fentanyl in his system so you can imagine the questions and the anguish of that day and every day since, honestly. But I knew almost immediately that he would want his life and his legacy to give more people the opportunity to experience days like our engagement day and all the other beautiful things that life has to offer. So I am here this effort is all with the intention of allowing his story to reach the ears it needs to reach and ensuring that he is a part of the movement to removing the stigma of addiction and treating those struggling with the compassion and the love that they deserve. I know he would want that. And he'd be really proud to be a part of that. You know, I had a lot of, I still have a lot of worries and things threatening to hold me back from <laughs> moving forward with this. I mean, it's the judgment of the stigma. I'm worried about what people will think about Tyler and what they'll think about me, honestly. <laughs> um, I don't have the thickest skin, so yeah, putting this on the internet is scary. But I know I have to do it. I just know I have to. I just really feel like this is the answer to my what the heck do I do now question. I, I need to honor Tyler. And I think this will help us both serve a greater purpose together. And to be able to do something together still is so special. So if you're interested in supporting that, stick around. <laughs> I honestly, I can't promise what this is going to be, like what content I'll come up with and how often I'll post. For once in my life, I don't have a plan <laughs> and I'm trying to roll with that. But my intention is to just continue sharing what's on my heart and listening to that knowing to tell me what I'm supposed to share and just see where things go. And I'd love it if you'd join me. One last thing, I want to honor the loved ones that we've lost collectively. So I have this idea to make an in loving memory of slide at the end of every video. If you have lost someone you love and you'd like their name to be included, just head down to the comment section below this video and type in loving memory of and insert their name and then that will be included in the following videos. So you'll have to come back and check it out. That's all for now. I am sending light and love to you.